Good morning. Welcome to worship on this fourth Sunday after Pentecost. Good to be with you on Facebook and YouTube. I want to say thank you for continuing to support the ministry and mission of First English with your gifts to keep our ministry going, even in these times of pandemic and very different from what we're used to. You probably noticed a change of angle from for our sanctuary worship. We started that last week just to give you a little bit more feel of the, the uh, sanctuary. And uh, we're always trying to improve and tweak our online worship and, and do so in that way. Uh, you will notice a, a similarity between this week's service and next week's service. Uh, Dan is out of town next week and I'm on vacation next week, so we are recording two services at once. So we'll be wearing the same clothes this week as we will be next week. So just the way it is. So we're recording two at once and then they'll be scheduled to uh, upload at the regular time, Saturday evening this week and Saturday evening next week. So we begin with our call to worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God from which nothing can separate us, and the life-giving Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. When we walk the pathways of destruction, we are met by the God of peace and, and reconciliation. reconciliation. When we sit and wonder if there is any way we can help, we encounter Jesus, who invites us to faithful service. When we least expect it, the Holy Spirit offers us life-giving water. We gather for worship in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, we are tempted by the light this world has to offer, a chant at the comforts of wealth and possessions, status and fame. We are tempted by idols promising freedom from need and fear. We are taught that hard, works, hard work comes with sacrifice, but we sacrifice the wrong things, the environment, our health, sometimes even family and friends. Forgive us when we follow and worship idols instead of you. Forgive us when we fail to deny ourselves, take up your cross, and follow Jesus. Call us into your ways and away from the temptation of this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's love is a wellspring overflowing into eternal life. God's love pours into us and over us again and again. You are God's child. Take heart. Your sins are forgiven. Now live into this good news. God's love is overflowing in you, pouring out to others. The abundance of God's love and grace and forgiveness has no end. Amen. We sing our opening hymn, hymn 453, baptized and set free, in 453.
That's one of my favorite ones. Our first reading for today is Psalm 89, verses 1 through 4, and then 15 through 18. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your steadfast love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. Happy are the people who know the festival shout. They walk, O oh Lord, in the light of your presence. They rejoice daily in your name. They are jubilant in your righteousness. For you, for you are the glory of their strength. And by your favor, our might is exalted. Truly our shield belongs to the Lord, our King, the Holy One of Israel. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus sends his disciples out as missionaries, he warns them of persecution and hardships they will face. He also promises to reward any who help his followers and support their ministry. Jesus said to the twelve, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. O God, you direct our lives by your grace, and your words of justice and mercy reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Okay, it's time for the children's sermon, and I probably sound a little bit louder now because our roadie forgot to turn the speaker on. That's me. Good morning. Good morning. Jesus says some important words about how to welcome people who may be strangers or visitors. He says, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes God. And whoever gives a cup of cold water to a little one will never lose their reward. You know, back before this time of the virus, if someone came to your home as a visitor, your mom or dad or you would say, can I get you something to drink? That is a way of welcoming someone. But now, in these days when we are not supposed to be visiting or being very careful when we do visit, what might be some other ways to say welcome or to say I care about you? Well, one day, one way is to wear a mask. I'm not going to put, put mine on because I have this microphone hanging off my face and it will make a bunch of noise, but you've seen people wear these when you're out and about. The scientists and the health experts and the doctors and nurses say these masks help slow the spread of the virus. And so we wear these masks to say, I care about you and your health and your family. I don't know if I have the virus, but if I do, I wear my mask because I do not want to spread it to you. This is a little different than offering a visitor a cup of cold water, but the idea is the same. Jesus calls us to care for our neighbor and wearing a mask is one way we can love our neighbor and share the light of Christ. Let's pray. Jesus, we do not know when coronavirus will end, but we pray it will end quickly. In the meantime, remind us of the many ways we can care for one another and keep each other safe. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Creator and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. When I preached on this story from Matthew in previous years, I've usually focused on the point of us, we, the church, the body of Christ, being a place of welcome for others. Do visitors to our worship get a smile? and a handshake, and a welcome to First English when they are here. And that is a pretty good sermon. That's a good message. We should be warm and welcoming to our visitors. And when we return to in-person worship, whenever that will be, I'm sure we will return to our welcoming tradition. It is a good thing to welcome others. Because as we just heard, when we welcome others, we welcome Jesus. And not only Jesus, but the God who sent Jesus. And I'll say more about this in just a little bit. But let's go back to the gospel and, gospel and remember who or to whom Jesus is talking. For this part of Matthew, Jesus is teaching his 12 disciples before sending them out on a mission trip. He gives them the power to share the good news, to heal people and cast out demons. He predicts that their mission will not always be welcomed. They will be rejected, maybe even run out of town or arrested. But he also promises that God will look out for them. And then he says, whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. Whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Jesus is talking about others welcoming his disciples in their mission. Jesus is talking about others welcoming us as we go about our mission, as we share the good news and the light of Christ in our community and in our world. Now this should make us sit up a little bit straighter because when we are welcomed into somebody's presence, they're not just welcoming us, but they're welcoming Jesus, Christ, and God. We could say this is an, an extension of us bearing the Imago Dei the image of God. We could also say this is an extension, a 
what Martin, Martin Luther calls the priesthood of all believers, where we are given the gift of representing Jesus Christ to the world. And we could say because, according to Paul, we are in Christ, and according to John, Christ abides, dwells, lives within us, our mystical unity with Christ puts his life flowing through our veins. And so then, wherever we are, Christ is there in us. So yes, please sit up a little bit straighter at that good news. But this also goes in the other direction, like I said earlier. In these words, Jesus is speaking to us, and he is speaking to the ones who are sent to us. When we welcome them, we welcome Christ. In Matthew 25, we sometimes get stuck in the times when Jesus is hungry and thirsty and naked, and we feed and offer drink and clothe him. But there is also, when I was a stranger, you welcomed me. Hospitality is a basic Christian practice. In the pre-pandemic times, we welcomed others into our homes, around our tables, into our church, and into our lives. It is an extension of loving our neighbor. And because by welcoming them, we are also welcoming God in Christ, it is also an extension of loving God with all of our hearts and all of our souls and all of our lives. It is one of those things that we should go out of our way to do. And not just with the strangers we encounter. It is sometimes easier to extend hospitality to someone we've never met before or barely know. But forget the people who are all, always around us. Maybe we overextend ourselves at work and, and meeting the needs of others and then neglect the needs of family and, or friends and we come home so tired we've got nothing left to give, which is not good. Our family and friends bear the image of God too and taking their love and, and attention for granted is as much an insult to hospitality as slamming the door in the face of a stranger. Jesus calls on us to intentionally see and welcome the Christ in everyone. Christ in the stranger, Christ in the enemy, Christ in the friend, Christ in the spouse, Christ in our siblings, Christ in the child, Christ in the migrant, Christ in the politician who makes our blood boil, Christ in the one who has a different faith, Christ in the one whose skin color or language is not ours. Christ in everyone, every single one. If we can see and welcome everyone as Christ, then maybe, just maybe, they will see the Christ who is in us and who makes us sit up a little bit straighter. Thanks be to God. Amen.
For the prayers of intercession, I will end each petition with the words, Hear us, O God. Ask you to respond with the words, Your mercy is great. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Let us pray. Called into unity with one another and the whole church, we pray for our shared, shared world. God of companionship, bless our relationship with our siblings in Christ. Inspire our conversations, shape our shared future, and give us hearts eager to join together in praise. Bless our bishops, Elizabeth and Gerald, Pastor Jack and Manwani Parish, and missionary Pastor Alex. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of abundance, you make your world thrive and grow to provide all we need. Inspire us to care for creation and watch for where the earth is crying out. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, your grace is poured out for all. Inspire leaders, judges, and politicians to act with compassion. Teach us to overcome fear with hope, meet hate with love, and welcome one another as we would welcome you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of care, accompany all who are in deep need. Heal all people with COVID-19 and those who are sick, lonely, or abandoned. We pray especially for Joyce, Dolores, Jim, Delbert, Kathy, Janie, Carmen, Mary, Sherry, Dave, Kay, Nicole, Tammy, Melinda, Luther, Bonnie, Molly, Lynn, Artemio, Carol, Shelley, Selena, Jordan, Rachel, Eleanor, and Larry. We pray for hospital personnel, medical researchers, doctors and nurses, especially Deb, Holly, Joy, Kara, Taylor, Lily, Todd, and Mike. Renew the spirits of all who call upon you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of community, we give thanks for this congregation. Give us passion to embrace your mission and the vision to recognize where you are leading us. Teach us how to live more faithfully with each other. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. O oh God, now hear the prayers of your people. God of love, you gather in your embrace all who have died. Keep us steadfast in faith and renew our trust in your promise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray. God of mercy and grace. The eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things, that we may come to help all of need. To come to help all in need, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Gathered into one by God's Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, who will be thy name? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And our closing hymn is hymn number 824. This is My Father's World, hymn 824.
neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Go in peace. Share the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.